What's up my pre-calc people? Welcome to video for topic 1.5 of AP Pre-Calculus, complex zeros and polynomials, a really big topic with lots of information about polynomials. In this specific video, we're gonna talk about determining if a polynomial function, or just any function to be honest, is an even function or an odd function, and what that actually means, not just for your function, but for the graph of the function as well. Let's just dive right into it. So even functions, what does it take to be an even function? In even functions, f of x equals f of negative x. Now this implies that f of x and f of negative x produce the exact same output values for all x values. So for example, if I plug two into a function, I get 12. I need to plug negative two in that same function and also get 12. And this needs to work for all values of x. If I plug in five, if I plug in negative five, I get the same output value. So even functions are symmetric across the y axis, which is the line x equals zero. Okay, that's even functions. Odd functions, f of negative x equals negative f of x. Now this might be a little bit tricky to understand, but let me explain. This implies that f of x and f of negative x produce opposite outputs for all x values. So for example, if I plug two into my function, I get 12. When I plug negative two into the function, I don't get 12, but I get negative 12, it's opposite. So odd functions are symmetric across the origin zero comma zero. Now, functions that do not do that a little bit, functions that do not have either of these characteristics for all x values are neither even nor odd. So it's definitely a little bit tricky to understand. I think even is actually the easiest to understand because all you got to do is plug in x, then you got to plug in negative x, and you need them to be exactly the same. But for odd functions, you plug in x, okay, great. And then when you plug in negative x, they're, they're not equal, they're opposite. So you'd have to throw a negative in front of f of x, and then they would be equal. So that's important to know for odd functions. All right, let's take a look at a couple examples here and how we can analyze this. So if we have this function, x squared minus 3, and we are asked to determine, is it odd or is it even, or, or maybe it's neither. So the first thing we're going to do is we have to determine what happens when you plug negative x into the function. We, we already know what happens when you plug x into the function. You get x squared minus 3. And we have to analyze this without looking at specific numbers. Now, we can always do that for fun just to kind of check and make sure. But we have to keep it generic with x's to make sure that it works for all x's. So we already know what f of x is, x squared minus 3. We need to figure out what happens when we plug negative x into the function. So we get negative x, I'm plugging it into the function, squared minus 3. Now, anytime I square a negative, it automatically becomes a positive. So negative x quantity squared is just going to become x squared minus 3. So what I just found out is that f of x, x squared minus 3, is equal to f of negative x, which is also x squared minus 3. This looks like we're going to have an even function. Now, let's just check real quick here. I'm actually going to also find out what is negative of f of x, because this would help me if it's maybe an odd function. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take f of x, which is x squared minus 3, and I'm going to put a negative sign out in front of all of it, and I get negative x squared plus 3. Okay, well, here's the deal. Negative x squared plus 3 is not equal to either f of negative x, nor is it equal to f of x, so we're definitely not odd, because to be odd, negative f of x must be equal to f of negative x. And this right here is certainly not equal to this. Those are very different functions. So the answer is that these are not these. This function, x squared minus 3, is an even function. All right, let's check out this next one, x squared minus 2x minus x. There's f of x right there. I don't have to do any work to find f of x. Now I have to figure out what happens when I plug negative x into it. So that's going to be negative x squared minus 2 times negative x minus 2. Okay, well, negative x squared, anything negative squared is always going to turn into a positive, so that's just x squared. Negative 2 times minus x is going to be a positive 2x minus 2. Okay, just at first glance, well, those certainly aren't equal. f of x is right here, x squared minus 2x minus 2. Here's f of negative x, and they are unfortunately not the same. Sorry. So now we're going to check out negative f of x. What happens when I just put a negative out in front? So here's f of x, x squared minus 2x minus 2. I'm going to throw a negative out in front, and now I have to analyze what happens. All right, so I'm going to distribute that negative. I get negative x squared plus 2x plus 2. 
Okay, well, that is not equal to f of negative x. Those are actually very different. The minus 2 in the back is a plus 2, and the x squared is negative. Now, I want to actually take a quick pause here. I want to kind of note something. Look right here. The negative x was in parentheses all squared, and a negative x times a negative x definitely turns into a positive x squared. But here, the negative is on the outside, so it's, it's negative, pause, and then the x is getting squared. So there the negative stays. you got to be really careful to understand that. So again, getting back to odd or even. So f of negative x is not equal to negative f of x. That's not odd. Nor is f of negative x equal to regular f of x. So unfortunately, this is a situation where we are neither even nor odd. What are you going to do? All right, let's check out one more example here. So our original function is x cubed over 4 minus x squared. So there's f of x. And now I simply have to plug in negative x and see what happens. So I get negative x cubed all over 4 minus negative x squared. All right, negative x cubed is negative x times negative x times negative x. That's going to turn into negative x cubed. A negative times a negative does make a positive, but times it by another negative, and you're still negative. All right, in the denominator, negative x squared is negative x times negative x. That's going to turn into positive x squared, but I still have the 4 minus that value. So be, be very careful with that, because a lot of kids will say, oh, the two negatives in a row turn into a positive. Absolutely not. You're not following order of operations. Negative x squared became positive x squared first. Got to handle exponents first. So now it's still 4 minus, but now it's x squared, because the negative x squared turned into just x squared, so it's 4 minus x squared. All right, and right away, I noticed that f of x, the original function, is not equal to f of negative x. In fact, the denominators are the same, but the numerator is very different. One is x cubed, one is negative x cubed. So I'm not going to be even. Let's see if I'm odd. Now I'm going to plug in the negative just out in front. So I have my original function, x cubed, all over 4 minus x squared. And I'm going to put a negative right out in front there. Okay, now at this point, the negative just goes, well, you can't put a negative to the top and the bottom because then it becomes um, a positive, right? We don't have two negatives, we just have one negative. So I'm going to put that negative in the top and I get negative x cubed over 4 minus x squared. One mistake a lot of kids put is they kind of distribute the negative across the top and the bottom. That would be two negatives, which would make it a positive. That's not the same. If there's a single negative out in front, you could put it across the top or you could put it across the bottom. You can't do both. And now I notice something really cool. Okay, wait a minute. Here is f of negative x, negative x cubed over 4 minus x squared. Here's negative f of x, and they are exactly the same. This means I have an odd function, because the definition of odd function is when f of negative x equals negative f of x. And if you're still a little bit confused, I, I highly recommend like trying a value, right? Like plug in 7, and whatever you get is going to be the opposite of when you plug in negative 7. These are not going to be the same. If they were, you'd be even. But one is going to be positive output, and one is going to be the same numerical value, but a negative output, and that's what makes them odd. All right, so it's not too bad to check for even and odd functions. It's pretty simple, but just does take a little bit of algebraic work. All right, let's now look at some examples where we're going to know that functions are even or odd and how they can actually help us interpret what we see from a table of values and then actually solve some problems based on it. So here we're told that we have a continuous function f of x that is odd and decreasing with selected values shown in the table below. Okay, great. We're going to use the table to find the following values. Now let me remind you, this is an odd function, which means f of negative x equals negative f of x. Okay, that's going to really help us in answering these questions. All right, so the first question here is, what is f of negative 2? Okay, well, here's what I know. I know that f of negative 2, because I'm odd, is going to equal negative f of 2. Not too bad, right? Again, that's what it tells me when I'm an odd function. That's what I know. I'm using the definition. So I know f of 2 is 5. So I'm going to keep that negative out in front right there. That negative is going to stay. And f of 2, I just found out, is 5. So now I'm just going to backtrack. 
f of 2 is 5, but I got to throw that negative in front because that's what f of negative 2 is going to be equal if I'm an odd function, which I am. So, of course, my answer is negative 5. Again, remember, all an odd function says is if you plug in a positive number for an input and then you plug in that same value but negative, you're going to get the same value answer but one positive, one negative. So, by looking at my chart, if I plug in 2, I get positive 5. And if it's odd, I simply know if I plug in negative 2, I'm going to get negative 5. Not too bad. All right, what is f of 1? Okay, well, once again, here's what I know. I know that to find f of 1, because I'm odd, this is going to equal negative f of negative 1. Not too bad. Okay, so what is f of negative 1? f of negative 1 is right here. It's 10, but I'm going to write that down. But then I need this negative sign right here to stick around. So there it is, negative 10. So again, backtrack. f of negative 1 is 10. But... I need a negative out in front of it because that's what the definition of odd tells me would be true for f of 1. Again, if you're like, oh, that's too confusing. I don't like doing it that way. Just think of it like this. When you're odd, when I plug in 1, I'm going to get a number. When I plug in negative 1, I'm going to get the same number but opposite. So I know that when I plug negative 1 in, I get 10. And that simply tells me when I plug in positive 1, I'm going to get positive 10, the opposite. Now, or I'm excuse me, negative 10. The opposite is negative 10. This is positive 10, so I'm going to get the opposite, which is negative 10. Not too bad. I hope that's pretty easy. All right, let's look at another example here, slightly different in ordering if I'm going to do this now. All right, we know that f of x equals 3. What does that tell me x is? All right, well, let's see here. Uh, f of x equals 3. And since I'm an odd function, I know that f of negative x equals negative 3. Okay, now... What value from my chart produces negative 3? Well, 5 does. Okay, that means f of 5 equals negative 3. And again, I got that from my chart. So that means that negative x must equal 5. I'm looking at this right here. If these are the same, negative 3, negative 3, then the negative x and the 5 must be the same. And if I'm going to divide by a negative or multiply by a negative, x equals negative 5. Now, let's just really slowly, again, really make sure that we understand exactly why that is. Think about this. When you're odd, if you plug in a positive number, you get an outcome. When you plug in the negative value, you get the same outcome, but negative. So this just actually proves it. All right, if I plug in 5, I get negative 3. That simply means if I plug in negative 5, I better get positive 3 which is what I'm trying to figure out. What value do I have to plug in to get positive 3? And I just proved it's negative 5. All right, let's do another one here as well. f of x equals negative 12. Then what does x equal? Well, I'm going to kind of go through the exact same process here. That means because I'm odd, f of negative x would equal positive 12. So I'm going to come over here and I say, oh, positive 12. f of negative 3 equals positive 12. Therefore, negative x equals negative 3. Divide both sides by negative, x equals 3. And again, really walk through this to make sure you understand it. f of 3, uh, excuse me, f of negative 3 equals 12. That's what the table shows me. And because I'm odd, that means f of positive 3 would equal negative 12. So what am I trying to figure out that produces negative 12? f of 3, which means x equals 3. A little bit tricky there, I know, but if you go slow, you have to understand. Now, again, some kids get confused and they think, oh, a negative has to lead to a positive or a positive has to lead to a negative. No, 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 no. All we're trying to say is when you're odd, f of x equals a value. When you plug in negative x, you're going to get that same value, but it's opposite. So if it was positive, it's going to be negative. If it was negative, it's going to be positive. So we see that the opposite happening in 35 and 36 here, but we get the idea of what that means to be odd and how we could use that information to help us solve these problems. And here's one more problem and how the knowledge of a function being even or odd is going to help us solve a really good problem. So the function f of x is given over the domain negative 10 to 10, including negative 10 and 10. It's represented for the selected values in the table below. Given that the function is an even function, complete the rest of the table. Okay, an even function means that f of x is equal to f of negative x. So just for example, if I plug in 17, I'm going to get the same thing if I were to plug in negative 17. The outputs would be the same. Or if I were to plug in 1, I'd get the exact same output if I plug in negative 1. Okay, well, wait a minute. 
And that's gonna help me right here because I know that when I plug in negative one, I get two, which means when I plug in positive one, I also better get two. That's what it means to be an even function. All right, same thing here. When I plug in four, I get negative three. So when I plug in negative four, I better get the exact same value, negative three. Living with even functions is so easy. And there's one more. When I plug in negative 10, I get 18, which means when I plug in positive 10, I get, well, I almost wrote negative 18. Oh my gosh, I get 18. I don't get negative 18, it's the exact same value. But hold on, it's worth it talking about that mistake I almost just made. If we were an odd function, that would be true. An odd function, when you plug in a negative value, you get the opposite of the what happens when you plug in the positive value. And that would be true if this was odd, but I didn't make that mistake, I corrected myself. So the output for 10 should be 18, the same output as negative 10. All right, not too, too bad when you're trying to use the knowledge of even or odd functions to help you solve one of these really cool type of problems where you're filling in the blanks.